G'day everybody and welcome to another week of This Week in Crypto. I took a hiatus last week. Why? Well, last week was a mad week of trading for me. Um, best trade of the year for me. Uh, I got Cardano against Perpetual. I got uh, Privacy against Perpetual. There was EOS. There was Litecoin. There was Tron. And if you trade the strategies that I employ, it was an absolute bull terror of a week. And then it went quiet. <laughs> this week, what's been going on? Well, we went up through 10,000. We came back down through 10,000. And now we're hovering around 9,900. Let's get up through 10,000 again. Sets a new higher highs, getting above 10,5. And we will have ourselves in a very, very strong looking position leading into the middle of the year. So what is going on this week in crypto? Well, the first thing I'd like to let you know of is that one of my articles was posted here on the 1st of June about how Bitcoin can break $10,000. Now, I suggest you get across to mickey.com.au, hit the blockchain bit there and read this article. Now, I'm going to tell you briefly what this is about. I was talking to you about the very fact that we can, the profits that we had in Cardano, in Ethereum, uh, and in some of these alts, we're in the top 10, which have substantial holdings, like Ethereum, for example. It was 34 billion or whatever it was, which is, uh, what did I say here? I, there's a certain percentage of um, of the market cap here. Here we go. Uh, 25 billion, and uh, it put on 14.85% against Bitcoin. So 14.85% of 25 billion could potentially, theoretically, if any profit takers came in, they'd be converting that pair back to what? Bitcoin. So it could drive Bitcoin price higher. Cardano, very, very similar. Look at the last couple of weeks that we had on Cardano, 44% gain and a 50% gain against Bitcoin. Again, it's a top 10 market cap mover. If the profits came back to Bitcoin, we could send Bitcoin higher. Now, that's exactly what happened. Well, Bitcoin moving higher, that is. I don't know if it's the reason why, but I did this the day before. The market did move and Bitcoin, as you can see here, here's my chart, smashed straight up through there on that particular day. Now, what happens from here? Well, there's still markets that are moving. Why only focus on the top 10? Because that's where the majority of the liquidity is. That's where the majority of the money is. You know, if some other coin pumps three, 400%, but it's only worth 20 million, it's not gonna make a dent in Bitcoin. Ethereum, 25 billion, well, a billion dollars moving back into Bitcoin is probably gonna make a bit of an impact on a relatively illiquid market because no one really wants to sell it. So have a read of that article to get a bit of an understanding and perspective as to how markets can move and get yourself around that understanding and education outside of just purely what I do, which is trading. You can also get a bit of a head start and get some theories going on right there and that's gonna help you with that. Across to Cointelegraph now, the rest of this news that I think is important is around banks, mainstream world, right? Banking, uh, bringing crypto and blockchain into the, to, to a much more acceptable sphere. Of course, at the moment, there is so much change going on. There is so much <laughs> turmoil in the world and none of it's good. None of it's good. Okay. You know, there's horrible things happening over it with the inequality in the world, all over the world. That's being addressed excellent. There's also a lot going on as far as COVID, which we seem to have forgotten about quite quickly here. Give it a couple of weeks. Unfortunately, it's probably going to rear its ugly head once more. It's not good. It's not good. But we've got lots of time to think about things and consider things and question ourselves and what we've got going on in our more or less, you know, capitalist world at the moment. Some of those questions might lean us to asking for other options, other options such as crypto. And as the people, if we want it, well, we'll get it, but we've got to move collectively together. And we'll start to see this, I think, start to see another opportunity come in. Look at all the stimulus that's going on and having people in there talking, Coinbase, talking to regulators, talking to banks. It's a very, very good start. So as I look through this, crypto meets banks. What activities related to cryptocurrencies or crypto assets are financial services companies or bank customers engaged in and what are the barriers? Oh, that's horribly hard to read, all right? <laughs> of course, it's written by, you know, somebody up there who, who speaks in big words. Essentially what they're saying is that they need to combine banking services together with crypto. We want crypto. Crypto is easy to work with. I mean, you, all you need is a phone and bam, you can buy. You can go right to my website. You can actually use your crypto.com uh, app there. If you do actually get that app, please make sure that you put in the reference code TraderCobb. 
because you're going to get 50 bucks and so will I. So give that a crack. But you can just pay for stuff. Like you just go QR code, bam. Now I know it exists elsewhere, but this is a really simple and easy way to do things. It's obvious that this needs to really become part of mainstream and if they can adopt that in with banking, bring more people in, I think it's really, really good. Because they're talking to banks, because they're talking to regulators, it's bringing more of the air of uh, legitimacy to our very small still and undiscovered space with massive potential. Across the coin desk, I'm gonna focus on the same thing. I'm gonna show you a couple of things here. The goods and the bags, the bads. <laughs> US bank regulator, regulators o -trip, uh, OCC asked for public input on cryptocurrency use in financial sector. Good. Lawsuit <laughs> accuses Zappo, Indodax of negligently holding stolen Bitcoin. Bad. Next one on Bitmain. Bad. And you know, we're topsy-turvy. But I want to show you some more of these banking ones as well. If we have a look, where is it? Uh, da, da, market wrap. No, 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 no. It was a little bit lower here. Here we go. Crypto-friendly arrival. Bank is launching today for those willing to disclose their bags. Again, it's coming to the mainstream. It's becoming more interesting for banks. Banks backed by crypto. It, it, the world is changing. We're seeing uh, not it's just crypto, it's just banking. They're starting to come together. And so too are the regulators. When we've got big business starting to mold into small business, we've got these challenger banks now that are offering the millennials, the younger people, the more tech savvy people, options that are not so old school 1919 nothing's changed let's just keep on doing business as usual because we're the biggest and we can do what the hell we want there's some challenges coming in now and crypto is a part of writing that history so too can you be so too can i be and i suggest you probably are because if you're watching this you're either trading crypto or you own a bit yourself so congratulations to you guys i wanted to focus on the positives this week i wanted to talk about the things that i think are good going forward I wanted to show you guys that there is good stuff happening. And I want to say to you, please be safe. Don't forget, if you are going to go out and protest and do what you got to do, make sure that you are keeping your distance because I don't want to see you sick and you've got to take care of yourself. So take care, guys. Have a fantastic weekend. And um, I'll speak to you again next week. Take it easy, guys. Bye for now. The Trader Cobb Crypto Show. Talking business in blockchain.